points out, and this is true, Senator Sessions has, uh, and he's working with Senator Sessions. This is an article that came out this last Friday. They say the GOP's Donald Trump nightmare may soon get a whole lot worse. Donald Trump met with Senator Jeff Sessions, and Jeff Sessions is the one who has done the lion's share of the research. Senators and congressmen can go look at the uh, secretive agreements. Uh, nobody has really bothered to do that other than a couple of congressmen. Uh, Rand Paul has taken a look at it. Jeff Sessions has looked at it. But nobody has focused on this like Senator Sessions. He set up charts telling other people as if they cared, as if they didn't know his colleagues in the Senate. This is a massive transfer of sovereignty to a globalist, uh, a global governance commission. He said this is a living document. Once this thing passes, which we're not allowed to talk about, we can't tell our constituents about, once this thing passes, they can change it at will without any further involvement from any of the democratically elected bodies of the nations involved. They can also add anybody that they want to. So while they're using China as a foil to try to get the TPP enacted, saying that we need this because China is taking us to the cleaners on trade, so we need the TPP as a counterbalance to China. Once they pass it, they can add China without any problem. Anything can be changed as part of this agreement. So Donald Trump met with Jeff Sessions, and Donald Trump came out and said exactly that. He said China can be added at any time. Very hopeful sign to see this happening. I'm very excited to see Donald Trump throwing his popularity and his weight uh, into opposing the TPP. Also, we've got, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Justin Amash opposing it. He says, under the treaty clause, the president, quote, shall have power by and with the advice and the consent of the Senate to make treaties provided two-thirds of the senators present concur. He says the Obama administration, however, asserts that the nuclear deal is merely an executive agreement that binds only the president. And that, of course, is talking about the Iran treaty because any of these treaties can be pressed that way. So hopefully uh, Trump and Sessions will uh, push back against the uh, GOP on uh, the TPP agreement. One other area where we see some hope again is uh, with uh, John Boehner. You remember just before. They went to recess. Uh, Representative Mark Meadows out of North Carolina threw down the gauntlet, as they point out, in the uh, Sons of Liberty. He said, uh, we want to see the speaker vacate the chair. And at first, they laughed it off. They said, this is not serious. We don't have to really worry about this. But then, overnight, they did a head count. And they found out that it was incredibly close. So close. Just a handful of votes that they tabled it until after recess. And so the question to you is, Boehner has been calling all these guys in Congress throughout the recess. And I'll ask you, have you been calling your congressman to say, get Boehner out? Because he's been putting pressure on them to stay in. Understand that, you know, when it comes to things like Obamacare, how you've been betrayed. Understand when it comes to open uh, borders, how you've been betrayed by John Boehner. Here's another example of how you've been betrayed. Gun control. Remember post Sandy Hook? Remember the spring of 2013 when it looked like we were going to be facing massive new uh, gun laws in the wake of the uh, false flag at Sandy Hook? Well, they point out here that when all that was going, as many people call it the battle of the century for uh, the right to keep and bear arms, John Boehner, they say, could have nipped gun control in the bud by saying that it would be dead on arrival in the House. But instead, he sent out the signal to Obama, said the House will consider any gun control proposals sent over by the Senate. There you go. There you go. So it's not just on Obamacare. It's not just on open borders. It is also on gun control and every other issue because Boehner is part of the ruling elite. And on the core issues, there's not any difference between the different parties. Here's another example of this. Someone else who fits into that category. Uh, Kasich, John Kasich, who is running for president. They say uh, in Breitbart that he channels Mitch McConnell on Planned Parenthood. He said the GOP doesn't need an unpopular government shutdown. No, we would never want to slow the government's progress in regulating us down, would we? Wouldn't want to have that happen. 
What do you say about a government that funds the kinds of things that we have just seen uh, from Planned Parenthood? What do you say about somebody like John Kasich who can't get the backbone to even stop the government funding it? I mean, we're not talking about locking people up even. We're just talking about stopping paying them out of the federal government. We're just saying we're not going to proceed with any budgets unless you stop that funding. He can't even muster the moral courage to do that. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Now, when it comes to climate change, again, there's going to be massive conferences. That's why the uh, Pope is coming. And we just had the Secret Service say that they have uh, foiled an attempt on the Pope's life. And, and if you ever looked at the, the pictures of Jonathan Price, the actor, see if you guys can pull that up real quick on the screen. They, he's a doppelganger for the current pope. And, and when I saw that, when they said that they had foiled a, uh, an assassination attempt on uh, the current pope, I thought, well, did they do that by um, uh, using a decoy actor, <laughs> Jonathan Price? You know, Hitler had a whole bunch of actors who were decoys. If you look at this and look at the two of them side by side, there's some amazing pictures. If you pull that up, if you Google that on uh, and, uh, if you look up the, both of their names, both of their names, uh, Pope Francis and Jonathan Price, you'll see them side by side. And I mean, they look like twins. So did they use an actor double to uh, to do this? Or maybe did they just uh, call off their own assassination attempt? You know, because we see that they have the, their own terrorist. Uh, there we, no, I thought we had that coming up. There we go. There we go. There's the two of them right there. You can see them side by side. And there's some pictures you'll see if you Google it on the Internet, you'll see the two. There you go. Got them right next to each other. Absolutely amazing. Of course, Jonathan Price is the actor who's one of my favorite uh, films, uh, Brazil. That was uh, Ted Gilliam, who was with Monty Python. That was his uh, kind of Python-esque take on 1984. That's uh, one of my, my favorite uh, dark comedies. But, you know, I, I guess this falls into the category. I guess we have to believe them. They're not giving us any evidence. They never do when the... Uh, uh, the national security state says that they have just saved us. You know, it's kind of like when Obama had jobs created and saved. How do you, how do you judge that? You know, the, the jobs that were saved that didn't get lost. You know, he includes those in a metric. Oh, now, now I guess we've got a new metric, and that is uh, popes that they have saved. But the reason he's coming, of course, is to sell climate change. Now, there was a recent... Back and forth uh, in the uh, EPA with a House Democrat coming after Brian Shaw, who's chairman of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. And this is very interesting because this goes back to one of the first stories I covered when I came to InfoWars. Again, the EPA has issued its clean power plan. Uh, they did this last August. Uh, they want to reduce carbon dioxide emissions from coal-fired plants by 32% over the next 15 years. This is part of Obama's war on coal. He promised, and he's keeping to this promise, he promised that he was going to essentially stop all power production from coal. And so he's trying to make good on that. Now, this is very interesting because they had a back and forth with this where the Democrat congresswoman, uh, Johnson, came after Shaw and said, uh, this is, uh, this, you're recklessly endangering the health of children. And he said, uh, no, CO2 doesn't kill anybody. <laughs> and she was absolutely flabbergasted because she was simply going off the EPA points. We'll be Health. right back. We're going to go back to the EPA's climate lies in just one moment because that is the agenda that we're going to be facing towards the end of this month. There's a massive push, as I mentioned. That's what the Pope's visit to America is about. He's never visited America before. Never, ever. He's, uh, what, 78 uh, years old, 77, 78 years old. Never been to America for any reason. But now he's coming to push a globalist government and the means of the globalist government of course is the climate change governance because that's going to give them what they need to tax us you can't have a governmental structure without taxes without an army and of course we're also going to talk in this broadcast about the european army that's what they're pushing in europe as well before we get back to that news i want to let you know that we have a two-week introductory offer on infowars life select foods these are new uh, storable foods that we're selling at infowars life Everything about these are made in the U.S.
We have it packaged exclusively in the U.S. The food, the packaging, everything is made in the U.S. There's nothing there from China that you have to worry about. There's no MSG in the food. There's no autolyzed yeast extract in the food. It has 25-year shelf life. And again, the packaging is very important when you're talking about a long-term storageable item like this. It has slimline totes for space storage, and we also have Ziploc. Uh, containers on the food so it doesn't go to waste. So you have very high quality packaging that keeps this uh, keeps this fresh. We use uh, low heat dehydrated as well as freeze dried ingredients to work together for maximum nutrition, taste, and shelf life. And again, if you buy it right now, you can get incredible pricing. A two week food supply, seventy nine ninety six. A four week food supply, one hundred and fifty six dollars. Three month food supply. $396. Those are incredible prices. This is only part of the two-week introductory offer that we have going. Again, you can go to uh, InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, go to also InfoWars Select. Both of those will take you to the same place, or you can call 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. Now, going back to climate change, and this is very important because, as we were talking about earlier, we've seen... The president being given uh, fast-tracked authority for these trade agreements that we know what is behind that. It's not about free trade. At best, it's crony capitalism, but we know that this is part of a longer-term movement for global governance. But he was given that, and now some of the same people who gave him that authority are complaining about the Iran deal and saying, wait, it's not a deal, it's a treaty. And we have to have this ratified by the Senate with 67 votes. It's like, yeah. That's right. When you ignore the Constitution in one way, it's going to come back and bite you in another way. The next way it's going to bite us as well is going to be on climate change. If he can just make deals with any country that he wants to without going through the constitutional process of having a treaty, if he can make massive agreements that transcend our sovereignty, and that's what the senator who's looked at it the most, Senator Sessions, has says that the uh, transatlantic and transpacific partnerships do. They create a transnational governance commission that will do things to us that uh, have absolutely nothing to do with the economy. Of course, it will have a lot of economic uh, aspects to it, but there's going to be other issues in it as well. If you can do that, then of course you can do it with climate change as well. It can act as a dictator. A good example, however, of the nonsense and non-science that underlies all of this is this back and forth exchange between a democrat uh, congresswoman uh, bernice johnson and the guy from texas saying that uh, she was flabbergasted she thought that uh, this was something that was going to save children's lives and if you remember when the epa was hooking people up to diesel exhaust so that they could get stricter regulations on fine particulate matter. We had the then current EPA director telling us that more people were dying of fine particulate matter than from cancer. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Monday, September 14th, 2015. I'm David Knight, your host. Today in the news, we see California wildfires killing, they say, at least one person destroying over 400 homes and businesses. This is something I've been gone for about a week and a half, I uh, got back towards the end of last week. We went out to the west coast of the Pacific uh, Northwest. Uh, we went around uh, the Oregon area looking uh, at that area as well as down to the tip of northern California to see redwood uh, trees, redwood forests. It was absolutely amazing to see these massive riverbeds that were dried up. Uh, uh, there was a lot of chemtrailing as a matter of fact uh, as we drove around as uh, my wife kept pointing it out to me she was she was very upset about it but um, as we were driving through there we saw as it was, we we're in the plane we could see the wildfires from the plane as we were driving through the areas we saw massive went through massive uh, choking smoke but one of the things that I thought was really touching was the uh, the signs of people thanking the firefighters who have come from all over the country to fight these fires they they genuinely appreciated uh, these people who are putting their lives at risk to save other people's lives, to save their homes, to save their businesses. We saw massive encampments of people who had uh, gone, uh, basically taken their camper trailers, and they just cleared out large areas for them to stay. And they were they were camping out there as uh, volunteers to work on these areas. 
incredibly sad to see what is going on there. And you can see some of that uh, footage there moves very, very quickly uh, through the forests and um, uh, these massive areas, not so much in Oregon, but boy, it really was was dry in um, in northern uh, California. It was also dry.